Yeah, pretty sure Nidorino isn't that good of a matchup against Gengar, but that's beside the point. Hello everyone, welcome to another Let's Play brought to you by Aruka Sensei. This is Pokemon Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance. A remake of Pokemon Blue for the Game Boy Color, one of my favorite games growing up. However, I will not be playing through this game normally, so to speak. That would be a little too easy. What I am going to do is I'm going to attempt the Nuzlocke Challenge. For those of you who don't know what that is, I will explain in a little bit. Yes. Uh, let's see. I think his dad named him Jerkass. I'm pretty sure that's what his dad named him. Who is Jerkass's father? Is it Mr. Pokemon? Or is it Koga? Or is it the 1991 Denver Broncos? Alright, so the Nuzlocke Challenge, yes. The Nuzlocke Challenge is a self-imposed set of rules for that can be used for any particular Pokemon game. What it is, it's two main rules. Well, it's actually three even though one isn't necessarily strictly followed, but... One of the rules is, if any of your Pokémon faint in battle, they have to be released. Some people put a graveyard box, set aside a box in their PC called a graveyard box. That they put them in just so they don't lose them forever. I, well, yeah, because that would make more sense if you uh, had, you know, a level 70-something that fainted and you didn't want to get rid of it completely. Yes, yes, yes. First things first. Change this to fast. I hate it when the text is slow. Squirtle would be the optimal choice. I'm going for Charmander. Just because, why not? I usually go with Bulbasaur. And it's usually 50-50 on Squirtle or Charmander. Another rule is that you should nickname all your Pokemon. I'm nicknaming my Charmander Cosmo because that's awesome. The point of this challenge is to create stronger bonds between you and your Pokemon. AKA not letting them faint. Because that would kind of break the bond. And nickname nicknaming them does create a stronger bond. I wish my HP wasn't low like that. I usually like it when it's 20, but I guess it doesn't matter all that much. Start off with a growl. The other rule of the Nuzlocke Challenge, the other main rule, is that the first Pokemon you see in an area, that's the only Pokemon you can catch. For example, the next area contains Pidgey and Ratata. If I see a Pidgey first, and I don't catch it, too bad. It's either I catch that one, or I catch nothing. There are some optional rules, some of which I will follow myself. One thing I can say about the Nuzlocke Challenge is it makes you fear critical hits like nothing else. Critical hits will be the worst thing to ever happen to you. <laughs> because essentially, 
Like, even if I used Growl... Let's say I used Growl to the point where Tackle only did one damage against me. If I... if I got hit with a critical hit, it wouldn't even matter. Those of you who have already played Pokemon are telling me to shut up right now, but that's fine. I'm just explaining that... Critical hit does double the damage it would have normally done without any kind of... without you lowering the base attack or anything like that. Doesn't even matter. One of the rules I'll be imposing on myself is that for items... Usually you can buy as many items as you want, as long as you have money. Not this case. I'm only limiting to myself to any combination of, I will say, six items per Pokemart. That means if I want six Pokeballs, I can buy six Pokeballs, but I can't buy anything else. If I want three Pokeballs, two Antidotes, and one Awakening, that's fine. The other thing is, in terms of the rule where I have to catch whatever the first thing I see is, until I get Pokeballs, that rule doesn't take place. So, I can still catch Pokemon back in Route 1. Because that seems kind of unfair to not be able to catch any Pidgey or Rattata there. <laughs> I don't know why, I still like going through all the NPCs' houses. We already know how to play. The one other rule that I can remember... ...is that... Now these are all optional rules. The item usage... Th the main two rules are if a Pokémon faints, they have to be released or put in a special specially marked box on your PC that you can't use anymore and that you have to catch the first Pokemon you see the item usage is my own optional rule for this for the sake of this let's play and the other rule is that starting with Brock's gym I have a level cap <laughs> So, I can't grind for too long, pretty much. So for Brock's gym, I'll set the cap at 10, so I can't be higher than level 10 when I take on Brock. And for every gym after that, it'll go up by 6. So Misty's gym, I can't be more than 16. For Surge's gym, I can't be more than 22, etc. Just to make it challenging, to make it... Make it quicker, at least, so I won't be grinding as much. I will have to grind a little bit, and I'll do that all off-screen. Just to make it faster and more efficiently. But yeah, this should be interesting. I've never tried this before. So it should be fun. It should be an interesting challenge. Many different things can happen. Hopefully, nothing too bad. But, yeah, next time I let's play Pokemon Leaf Green, we enter the first route along our journey. And hopefully catch some new friends along the way. Take care and see you next time, everyone.